Hey, what's up guys? Six somebody here. It's another episode and the battle for second is heating up. Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. The battle for second spot takes place this weekend. Super Sport United going up against Orlando Pirates. I mean, it's a big one, right? Orlando Pirates, honestly, they're picking up form. They're looking just right at the right time as well. Four wins in the last five. Not conceding goals. They're looking like the Orlando Pirates of last season. But the question is, where have you guys been? Like, why do you guys only show up now when, like, Sanons is in Mauritius, but you're still in South Africa? Like, the gap is just too wide, but it's fine. We'll take the match between Supersport and as well as Orlando Pirates. Supersport, on the other hand, as well as Gavin Hunt, you can just see that CAF football is taking its toll. They've got a thin squad, a very young squad, and they're playing tomorrow before they have to play Orlando Pirates. And I'm thinking, Gavin Hunt is probably going to forfeit that game because he has to keep his best players ready for Orlando Pirates. And I think he would rather take second than having to do well in the Confed Cup. But if you look at the history of Supersport United, in the last six meetings against Orlando Pirates, they've only won once. Once. They don't beat Orlando Pirates. And you know what? They have to get a result. But I think they're not going to get a result because Orlando Pirates are speaking up for them. They look scary. And I just think they're going to be able to go past Super Sports United. But one thing we can both agree on is that none of them are going to finish first. Listen to this one. Hellenic, Cape Town Spurs, Mamluri Sundowns, Super Sport United, Chipper United, Bafana Bafana, Brent Karalse is in the building. And I simply asked him, Gavin Hunt says the hugging of players is BS. But Rulani does it though, right? So what does he think? Okay, guys, another guest on Playing the Field with Chicks. It's a big guest, guys. Listen to this one. Hellenic, Cape Town Spurs, Sundown, Super Sport United, Cheaper United, Cape All-Stars. Brent Carlson. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Shakes. How are you doing, big man? No, nah, man, I'm good, man. I'm good. I mean, I haven't seen you in such a long time. I mean, the obvious first question would have to be, what have you been up to? Well, I'm I'm obviously based. Uh, I retired in Cape Town. Um, when I was done playing, that was obviously the plan. Uh, with my family, and I've been here ever since. Um, football, doing my own football clinics on the side, but most of the time I'm busy with Safbu, which is the players' union. So I coordinate this province for all the professional players. So that's what's kept me busy. But still involved in football, but more in the in the background. Yes. No, man. That's 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 good to hear because you know. Obviously, players retire, and sometimes you hear some really sad stories about some players. I think there's been a story about Rato Chawangu as well recently, where he's also in sort of a hard place. What's that like? What's the challenge been like after retirement, I guess? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's, it's very tough. You know, everybody, I think for every individual, it's, it's tough. Man. But for me also, it was tough, you know, being at home. Um, most of the time, not having a, a schedule, not having a say something to go, go and do. I think that was probably my first year, two years being at home. That was what it was like, you know. So it's tough for for everybody in a different way. But I I see it, especially now with 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 me being at the union. I see it a lot, lot more with even the current pros. How they sort of um, once they're done playing, out difficulties for them as well, just to get back into some sort of um, employment or be it anything, maybe even if it's not employment, but just something to do to keep them busy, you know. So, um, yeah, something we look at, at trying to improve for the current pros as well. Awesome. And into the football now. So, at this current moment, when Sundance is dominating the league, having won it back to back to back to back to back. I look back at your time, man, and I'm like, but you won the league with Super Sport United when there was Orlando Pirates, when there was Chiefs, when there was Sundowns. You're able to compete with those with those teams. I mean, what will it take to stop Mamluri Sundowns? How can people stop a Mamluri Sundowns in today's time? Yeah, I think I, that I, I don't know. I, I like a lot of the guys, sort of my sort of my generation, maybe even the generation before, they all talk about the mentality of the players, you know. So I don't know if it's that. <clears throat> but I just feel like 
look, you, it's the 16 teams. I think when, when the league starts, it's everybody on zero points, everybody on zero games. And I'm sure all of them have targets. They set themselves targets, the clubs, the teams, they set themselves targets. But surely it's a competition, guys, you know. Um, let's, let, let's try and make it more competitive. I understand uh, um, uh, um, some people feel the league is getting a bit boring, but I don't think so. I think there is clubs that are trying, uh, you know, Stellenbosch is one of them, Cape Town City, Super Sport. Mm-hmm. And if you look at uh, what they sort of what they have and what they're dealing with compared to what, what Sundowns have, it's, it's chalk and cheese. But I knew this when I was a player at Sundowns. I knew that this was going to happen. And that's why even when I was retired, I said to people, look, Sundowns is going to dominate for the next 10 years. They're like, what do you mean? I said, watch what, watch what I'm telling you. Sundowns is going to dominate for the next 10, 15 and I'm glad they're starting to sort of creep into Africa and become your sort of your, your powerhouses in Africa because that was ultimately the plan as well. Uh, you said you saw this coming, the dominance in terms of Mamluk Sanals happening and stuff when you were at Mamluk Sanals. What what did you see? What what did what made you realize that you know what guys maybe for a very long time this team is going to dominate? Yeah, well, look, I think that was only the, the the president of Patrice's second year of ownership. and But the things he sort of told us and the things he, he said, look, that this is for a club owner to say that to you, it already tells you as a player, so look, the club has a plan. This is what their plan is. This is what they want to do. So if you're not with that plan, obviously you're going to sort of fall by the wayside. And if you're not at that level to sort of reach those goals, you'll also fall by the wayside. So I was very impressed with that at the club and sort of in 2006, he wanted to find out who are the, who, what are the players earning in the league or the top earners in the league. We need to, we need, we need to earn more than those players. Um, Sundowns players need to be the best uh, paid. They need to be the, you know, everything of the club needs to be the best. And that's where I realized now uh, this club is going places. And obviously it, it needs to fall in place. Everything needs to fall in place. The football the, the the commercial side, the, you know, all of the stuff, the, the staff, everything else. But it's getting there. Um, but I'm happy. I mean, it, is it is it a simple case of money? Because I could fire back at you and say, but you competed against <laughs> Pirates and Chiefs, who possibly were yeah. also earning big bucks at that time, but you are winning league titles. So is it just money or is it the mentality that you are going on about? So, you know, you need to have everything. That's why I say you need to have everything in place for you to be at the level that Sundowns is at now. So it's not only about the money. Yes, the money is important. It's very important because that's how you get the best players. I'm not going to go play for peanuts. Come on. If I'm a good player, I know what I'm worth. I know what my value is. I'm going to go get some good money. And if people are willing to pay me that, even if I play five games for that season, those five games I'm going to play at my best. You know, and if it's a three-year contract, five-year contract, doesn't matter. That's what people need to realize, that the players also think like that. They don't only think about, I want to play, I want to play. I want to play, but I also want to win and I also want to earn good money. So a lot of the factors come into play. Yeah. But they've sort of got it right. You know, the other clubs were dominant. Chiefs, Pirates, they were dominant in the 90s, uh, sort of early 2000s. But I knew it's going to change. Sort of when I went to Sunrise and I saw what they were doing, I knew Amazing, amazing, amazing. I, I have to tell you, I can ask a question regarding players, coaches. Can they have a relationship together? Because um, Kevin <laughs> came out with comments to speak about uh, when the coaches are hugging players, it's not necessarily a real thing. And then you find that uh, Lan McQuinn of Mombly Sanos hugs these players quite a lot. So <laughs> That's where, Kevin, do you, man. where do you stand on, on, the, on the relationship <laughs> between players and coaches? I think that's just Gavin. That's just Gavin and his personality and how, you know, how he probably grew up. You must remember Ulan is probably off the, off Gavin's age, you know. So it's he's a different, he's a different uh has a different personality and all of that. Each to his own, I would say. I would say no. also to the players, you need to today's players, you need to be very you need to adapt to to, you know, and that's where Probably the mental side of the things come in. We, we've heard about the story with Lyle Foster, so I hope he's doing well. Mm. But it's 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 got a lot to do with that. And and 
you need to adapt as a player now because you'll go to a different club or you'll go to a, you'll meet another coach at a different club. It's not like the olden days where a coach used to coach for ten years the same team. It's different now, and if you look at at Gavin, he's he's upbringing, and if you look at Roland, he's upbringing is two different things. So uh, uh, that's I'll just say each to his each to their own. You know, like Gavin, he thinks a different way. Roland thinks a different way. But I I, I like the fact that he has a relationship with his players, and maybe. You know, he, those players, a lot of the times, they will always stay loyal to you. And if you move, say, for, for instance, he moves to another club, they'll be the first to say, coach, I want to go with you, you know, so. And also another topic that I wanted to touch on with you, man, especially concerned that you're a former player. There have been reports coming out of Morocco Swallows that apparently players have not been getting paid. And even Steve Compella came out and said that some players have used to train. Um, due to that situation. I just wanted to know, because it's not the first time we've had a story where the PSR club is not playing for players or there's rumours of that nature. How much does that affect players? You know, and I mean, can it also affect performances as well? I'm just trying to figure out how how deep does it go for players' sake, especially when they're not getting paid? No, ah, definitely. Jeez. Look, a lot of, the, a lot of my sort of... Um, generation and the generation probably before me will always talk about how we didn't play for the money. Yeah. But she was in today's time, guys, oh, you know, it would be tough to 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 say uh, um not say that you're not playing for the money, but not going home with with without without anything in your pocket or your bank account after working the entire month. That's not on, you know. It's something that we always also say to the players when we speak to them is like don't allow clubs to walk over you like that because at the end of the day, I think clubs need to realize that without the players, they won't have a club. They won't have a team. And they need to start respecting the players. And most of the clubs that do this never come out at the end with a good result. They always end up losing. Sometimes, I mean, Swallow is a perfect example. They've lost now, I don't know how many in a row. And it's not because they've it's just come out now. It's something that's been happening for maybe a month or two, mm. you know. And there's nothing new in South Africa. And the league needs to look at it. It's, I think we've all been saying it with a lot of other things. I'm glad that FIFA and CAF have come out with the club licensing because that's where it starts. If clubs don't are not um, licensed properly, registered properly, then they get away with things like this. Um, I'm surprised that that's... That a club like Swallows that have gone through what they've gone through are doing this, you know. Uh, have you been watching Bafana Bafana? What have you thought of them? Yeah, I've I've been impressed. I must say I've been impressed. Um, nice young team. Um, got a little bit older, but I think the coach realized he needed to put he needed to put some experience in there. Uh, yeah, but I, I I'm I'm excited, um, especially. I would like to see how they they sort of do in the Nations Cup because a lot of our clubs have done well in, in, in Africa um, the last, I think, two, three years. Not only Sundowns, I think the other clubs have also done well. They could have gone, gone a bit further. But um, there again, you know, Sundowns are a powerhouse. Why? Because they, they do things differently. So, but good luck. Uh, but final, final, I think I'm hoping a final. Not, mm-hmm. not the Cup, but I'm hoping a final. I'll well, we're hoping, we're hoping the final comes and as well as the cup could come home as well. But there's a little bit of a problem that we face. I don't know how you would deal with a situation like this. Of course, Lau Foster has been away for some time dealing with mental issues. He was recently on the bench for Burnley at this at this uh, recently. And he's coming back slowly but surely. He's been announced in the pre-squad to go to the Nations Cup. But Vincent Company has come out and said he doesn't think it's a good idea that he goes. I mean, how would you how would you deal with that? Um, I mean, would would he have to go? Does he not have to go? Is it up to him? I, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I say it's very difficult. <laughs> the player, I think the player, it's, his, it's going to be his decision at the end of the day. The club pays him. Remember, that's where he gets his bread and butter. Yeah. Um, yes, he's, he's, yes, he's patriotic. He loves his, his, his country. But also... That's that's what's been our sort of downfall. Even in the past, we, we have players that are playing in Europe and they have to travel so far. You know, they have to travel so far. And those coaches in Europe, all they're thinking about is Jesus, this guy has to travel for so long. 
and he's going to be in Africa. He's even going to play there. Uh, what if he gets injured, you know? And if you look at Lyle's situation, he's been their top sort of player, the yeah. top player. So, uh, But I think they also understand that uh, the Nations Cup is a, is a big um, sort of tournament for, for us as a nation. But Bruce has put him in the squad. So Bruce is obviously, his plan is he wants him to play. Mm. So I think it's between, it's going to be too BB between the two Belgian <laughs> Uh, competitors just to sit down and talk to each other and come to a, a, a sort of yeah but we need him we need him oh. so if I don't know it's very difficult I think he, it's, it's up to Lyle you know yeah I hope he I hope he'll be alright I'm glad that he's back playing in some kind of way because he did come off the bench as well thank you for being a guest but the last question I do have for you Brent you in the space so you'll be able to give me an answer and also, there's no wrong answer to this question that every guest that I ask. Where is South African football okay. for you right now? I've, I think I've seen this. It's in the same space it was probably five, maybe even ten years ago. Commercially, we've grown. It's become, it's become a, like I said, one of the top, if not the top league in Africa. But um, a lot of other things have also not not improved, you know. I think the football, yeah, football side of it. Yes, Sanans are doing great locally, even on the continent. But the other, the other teams need to sort of, you know, if they get close to them, then we even got a bigger, bigger league that we can boast about. I see, I see. I totally agree with that. Listen, thank you for for being a guest. Thank you for even the contribution you've given the game, even that you're doing right now. For me, Brent, if you're playing in today's time. Yeah, I think you're a top player for us, without a shadow of a doubt. That's the qualities that you possess. No doubt about it. You, de- you deserve more caps, man. No, nah, I wouldn't have been able to run, man. The boys nah, run today. Well, I'm talking about the peak. I'm talking about the peak, uh, Brent Carroll's is over. At, at his peak, I think you'd be on 50 caps for fun at this moment. But thank you so much for being a guest, and I wish you all the best with your endeavors, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, Shakes, man. Thanks for having me. Who was up to par and who became our star? But also, who fell short in this game we all love? Let's find out on Muhu of the Week. The stars of this week has to be Orlando Pirates. It was the only fixture that played over the weekend in the league. Going away to Golden Arrows, having to get the win. Yeah, this team, man. I'm only angry at it because I'm just like, why only now, guys? But they're back, no doubt. And the Muko of the week has to be the Golden Arrows coach, Mabuti Kanyeza. <laughs> Since Keza Chiefs, when he was speaking about Keza Chiefs, and speaking about he doesn't fear them or anything like that, six losses in a row. <laughs> My brother, clean it up, man. You're the Muko of the week. It's time for Bet of the Week. Get ready to win big by placing the right bets on the right games. The games are coming thick and fast, guys, and I've got the Premier League, I've got the Serie A, and I've got La Liga on the bet slip. Let's go through the games. Barcelona going up against Almeria. I've gone Barcelona straight win. Alaves going up against Real Madrid. Real Madrid straight win. Aston Villa going up against Sheffield United. Aston Villa straight win. Tottenham going up against Everton over 1.5 goals. Inter going up against Lecce. Inter to win that one. Liverpool against Arsenal. I've gone over 2.5. <laughs> Roma against Napoli. I've gone a draw or Napoli win. The odds, 7.72. Seven times my money back. So 350 turns into 2,900. If you want to win with me, click on the link below. Remember to practice responsible betting at betway.co.za. I've come to the end of the show. Now, before I do go, I would like to wish everybody happy holidays. Please be safe on your travels. But before you do travel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified for future episodes. 